You mentioned that you went to Juilliard. How did you get there? Well, actually, I'd always wanted to go to Juilliard because I'd always heard about this famous school of the arts. Actually, it was a music school, um, and they had an excellent dance department. Many of the major choreographers were teachers there. Uh, Jose Lamon, um, Martha Graham, even though she was before I came, but many of the Martha Graham uh, teachers and dancers were faculty at Juilliard School. And so when I went to New York, when I left Detroit, I just knew if I was going to dance then it was getting later and later and I was already like 17, 18, so I was already kind of late getting into the dance, even though I, I've been dancing all around, but as far as formal training and as far as um, being able to audition to get into companies and things like that. so. At the same time that I decided it's time for me to go to New York if I'm going to dance for real, <laughs> then I also auditioned for Juilliard because I wanted to go to college too. I wanted to finish my college. Of course, when I went to Juilliard, when you audition there, you start from the scratch. doesn't matter how much dance you had before or what other college classes you had in dance. When you go there, you start from scratch. <laughs> and when I got there, I made the audition, so oh, wow. I was so excited. and. Um, I'd already been dancing somewhat professionally. I've always been a performer and being able to get paid for some of my dancing. So I was dancing in a company at the same time I was dancing at Juilliard, which is a little different because um, at Juilliard a lot of times they don't want you to be performing until after you've been through school. Um, I was dancing with uh, Sounds in Motion, Diane McIntyre's company. What is Sounds in Motion? Um, it was a modern dance company, improvisational dance, and um, chore regular choreographed pieces. But we did the works of Diane McIntyre, who is now a very famous African-American dance choreographer. But um, you asked me earlier about some of the difficulties that I went through. and. I would say get, just getting through Juilliard was a real task. Um, if you were sick, you did not miss class. And then if you weren't dancing, like if, if you had <laughs> strep throat or pneumonia, you'd be sitting on the side watching and you'd think, I would have been doing that. <laughs> it was that difficult. <laughs> but I did it. You know, I was there, so I did it. And I ended up graduating. And um, we studied um, primarily modern and ballet. Those were the two areas. Although I also had, had the opportunity to take flamenco dance there with Hector Zaraspi. And flamenco dance was an early love of mine, so I was really excited to be able to get uh, classes in that. What's flamenco dance? Flamenco. Flamenco. It's a... Uh, Spanish dance. Oh. <laughs> the dance of the gypsies. <laughs> and um, I've kind of continued to do that off and on. It's a, another love of mine, but when I went to um, Juilliard, also it was like during the late 60s, early 70s, so I was also getting into my blackness. <laughs> and uh, there were many black dance companies going on at that time, so I was doing more of that. What about Omaha? Omaha? Well, I'll tell you, I had a teacher at Juilliard that said if you ended up in Iowa or, you know, anywhere out that way, <laughs> then you became a failure in life. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to put that down there or not. <laughs> But the way I got there was um, during my time dancing with Sounds and Motions, um, I'd also been on a spiritual search all of this time. And I grew up in Detroit um, with Jewish kids as well. But many of the dance kids that were in all city dance, they were Jewish. And then I had some Jewish neighbors. and. I grew up in the AME Church, which is African Methodist Episcopal Church, and we always would recite the Ten Commandments as part of the liturgy. 
And so I knew that my Jewish friends, they all went to synagogue on <laughs> Saturday on the Sabbath. And that was always just a question to me, like, why do we do this? Because we, we recited the Ten Commandments all the time, so I wondered why did we go to church on Sunday? And so my sister, she be she was introduced to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and she started sending me literature all the time. And so I would read it, but I didn't really have time because I was busy dancing. <laughs> but some of it started sinking in, and I was kind of getting dissatisfied with my life with dancing. I felt like there was should be something more. And so as she started sending me these things, and I started studying the Bible, then... I started questioning more, and then I started, whenever I would go home for a visit to Michigan, I would go to church with my family who was starting to change from AME to Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> so whenever I would go to church, I would hear, you know, the different discussions and topics, and one time I felt like the pastor was talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing I knew when they had the uh, call, the altar call, there I was up in the front, and it was like, what am I doing up here? <laughs> I am a dancer, you know. And I know that Seventh-day Adventists, don't, as a as a tradition, they don't dance. <laughs>